Hi, Bill Box here. Welcome you to Midday uh, and also to Friday and the weekend ahead. We have a terrific show for you today with a lot of music, a lot of talent, and a lot of performance. Uh, Stephanie Mills, who was mobbed yesterday as she was signing autographs at a record store in Queens, will be here singing from her new album. The exquisite singer Barbara Cook is with us. We have excerpts from the off-Broadway show Scramble Feet and a very special moment in the history of television. One of America's finest actors is named Michael Moriarty. You've seen him in a lot of films. I recently saw him in GR Point on Broadway. Uh, I'll tell you a little bit about, about more about his credits later. He is also a terrific musician, a songwriter, and a man who loves to sing, currently performing at a club called Baltex down in Soho. He has never sung before on television, and that has to come to an end. So here is Michael Moriarty singing one of his own compositions. Michael. Thank you. This is something. La da do ba da 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 ba da da do 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 da 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 da. Ooh ba da ba da 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 ba da da do ba. I wrote the lyrics to this. Sweet da ba da go do 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 do. I'm a big town boy who let a small town girl get in. Why, I'll never know except for the things she's got to show Those down-home country slacks that she wears Won't let my eyes relax And he wears They look up and down Then all around There's nothing in town That can compare With what she's got to spare A big town boy like me Should take a small town girl for granted let her hang around and send her run back to lost and found If we make her, she'll start the fall And then I tell her love isn't all it's made up to be None of it's free and she will agree To drop the thought she has of owning me Oh, that's the way I thought I'd handle this Sweet talk of really good times, but nothing scandalous Boy, was I wrong to think she'd understand I woke up to find the affair I had gotten out of hand Big time boy like me ends up the town's biggest phony. Now I know too well that loving a woman can't be hell. You start out saying she's not so bad, then you find out you're going mad when she isn't there to get in your hand. We just don't fail. But such a big time boy to fall in love. So I never do we got that. So do me that that. So dig dig dig. So dig love another day. So do me that that that. So dig 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 that that. But then do dig 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 dig. So do me that 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 Sweet talk of really good times, but nothing scandalous. Oh boy, was I wrong to think she'd understand. I woke up to find the affair I had gotten out of hand. Oh, a big time boy like me ends up the town's biggest phony. Now I know too well that loving a woman can't be hell. You start out saying she's not so bad, but then you find out you're going mad when she's a dirt to get in your hand. It just ain't fair when she's a dirt to get in your hand. It just ain't fair when she's a dirt to get in your hand. It just ain't fair. Was it your big? To fall in love. Thank you. Thank you. Well, it's over. Yes, First I did. time on television, he did it. Oh, that's, that could be fun. I think you're a very interesting singer. I love oh, that thanks. jazz. Oh, well, that's that jazz comes by, scat honestly. stuff. Yeah, my, my father had an incredible record collection. Um, do you, any of you know about Art Tatum? Art Tatum? Yeah, sure. right. Well, uh, he played that a lot, so I grew up thinking Art Tatum was normal piano. That was you know I was in trouble, because he's the best. And so uh, that and the singers, uh, Bessie Smith, and Nat King Cole, before he was uh, a big hit, he was a great pianist and singer, had a trio. 
So yeah, I, an excellent piano player. Yeah, so I grew up in love with that. You know, it's, I, I think it's, it needs to be firmly established, although I think by doing it, you establish that you are not somebody who all of a sudden, because you're a successful actor, decides you want to do this. This has obviously been part of your life for a long, long time, right? Oh, yeah. I was, I was uh, noodling that little thing on Bleecker Street, a little piano, a little piano bar on Bleecker Street for a long time. And I was waiting tables at night, and then I'd come down on the weekends and play till four in the morning. All the old songs. The only, the, one of the big ironies is that on St. Patrick's Day, some rather uh, well, uh, well um, how do I put it? He'd, uh, he'd had a few. Irishman came in asking for an Irish song, and I didn't know how to play an Irish song. I thought he was going to murder me. <laughs> so and I told him my name was Moriarty, and he wouldn't believe it. That's why. Because <laughs> I couldn't believe it then either. I didn't know how to write, uh, play an Irish jig on St. Patrick's Day. So. I want to ask you a couple things about the other area of your career, because you've had to... Well, Stella, Stella Adler describes you as, as Ameri one of America's finest actors. And the work I've seen you do, I think, really reflects that. Thank from you. what you did in the Holocaust and, and GR Point and... Uh, well, I, I actually wrote some of these things down. I want to tell oh. folks a little bit about you. Uh, film, Bang the Drum Slowly, followed by The Last Detail, Report to the Commissioner, Who'll Stop the Rain. Uh, Michael won two Emmys, one for The Glass Menagerie, the other for Holocaust. That SS officer, Eric Dorff, that mm. you portrayed in Holocaust. What, what happens to you when you create such an intensely brutal and ugly portrayal on television, and you get up the next morning and go out and want to have breakfast someplace? The morning after you have appeared as this deadly Nazi on TV. Oh, well, I, what do you think would happen? A lot of mean looks. You mean to myself? Yeah, a lot of mean looks. And well, I, I. Uh, is there a transference? Is really what I'm asking. Well, uh, in order to do the, in order to do the film, what I had to do was first of all uh, believe that evil is a very temporary thing and that God's got it all in hand. He really does. And uh, the more I did that film, the more I really understood that good overcomes evil every time. I had to believe that for one. And then uh, what I did was a little trick. I couldn't look at the other actor and say some of these lines. So what I did was I, I look at the corner of the camera. Now the corner of the camera is, um, it's metal. It's hard, it's an object. Now, if I look at it, it doesn't look back at me, so my eyes never change. So in treating people like objects, which is what this character did, in order to get that effect, I really didn't pour it into the other actor. I poured it at a metal piece. And mm. so the, the relationship of Dorf to other people became the relationship of me to this. And I take this and I put that over there. And then I take this and put that over there. And then I don't want this and I throw that away. And I want this here. So I didn't really, I couldn't really act it totally with the other place. I so I'd look off there and then, but right. if I look in your eyes, your eyes are changing. Your entire persona is changing. So it would humanize me. Right. And the report at points where he was a human, he began as human like we all do. Yeah, and then as it started to, you know, then I'd go more to objects and I'd deal more with. Well, how about people on the street reacting to you? After they see you as this deadly Nazi character on television, this nice, friendly face walking down the street, what happens? Well, the press have tried to, tried to make the world think that I'm in jeopardy for my life, but I'm not. I mean, when people say uh, things like, I hate you, it's the big compliment. They're smiling on their face, they say, I hate you. You were so good, I hate you, I hate you. Yeah. That is a compliment. So, and it's all done with humor and love and warmth. So I've never had bad problems with it. One other thing, I saw GR Point, uh, uh, which has unfortunately closed. I thought it was one of the strongest dramas of the season. So uh, did how, I. Yeah. How do you explain? And a great repertoire performance by the company. Yes, all, really, wonderful. Really, a great repertoire. Yes, performance. ensemble. A wonderful ensemble, ensemble performance. That's it. Uh, how do you? Why do you figure that really solid drama like that doesn't float as? on Broadway? Well, um, American playwrights have had a disastrous year this year. No American playwright is a prophet in his own country. There are some English plays here which are highly lauded by the critics, but American playwrights have had a disastrous time dealing with American critics, and it's because they're writing out of their own hearts, and critics don't want to hear a new heart. They don't understand it. And I, and I, re I firmly believe it's the insensitivity 
of the critical, uh, the major important critical mm. minds to uh, the new play, the new playwrights. In Europe, I know these plays would succeed better. That's one reason. The other reason is that Broadway is an illusion. It's a, it's not truthful. No one makes money in, on Broadway. The last thing probably to make money was Chorus Line. That's one out of 150 productions. So people invest money in the Broadway production and they think they're going to get their money back, but theater is not a popular entertainment. It is more like ballet, it is yeah. more like opera, and it should not be conceived of as a, as a popular as a entertainment. As a big money making entertainment. Television is a popular entertainment. Film is once removed from yeah. television. Okay. Stay with us, Michael. We have Barbara Cook coming up to sing and talk right after this. We'll be right back. Michael's going to sing a little more later on.